This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board, I saw, excuse me, Sunderland Select Board, still tongue-tied, uh, and if we can call to order at 637. Uh, we have uh, with us tonight uh, folks from public safety, from boards of health, uh, from the school. I see, I, this is the first time I've done Brady Bunch or Hollywood Squares for people who are old enough to understand the squares piece. And uh, it's interesting. Um, so we're going to talk about the COVID update. We're going to go through a little, very quick uh, budget update, a uh, very quick touch on uh, annual town meeting warrant articles, as well as motions, uh, board updates, uh, town administrator updates. Uh, we get a fuel oil bid, which seems like the perfect time to buy, right? And then uh, election warrant review. So first up, if we can start with a state of emergency COVID-19 update, and I'll turn this piece over to uh, a member of the health chair. Uh, and we're gonna talk about a couple of recommendations. Caitlin, you wanna weigh in? Hi, yes. Um the the first thing i wanted to talk about uh is the closure of uh the play structures and swings um on at the sunderland elementary school as well as the basketball courts uh that seems to be our only playground area um there is another now that i just thought of it i don't know if it was taken down due to construction but behind the maple ridge church is another playground area and um you know that's on private property and um i know that um our surrounding towns are closing public and private if they're at, if they're accessible to the public um at this point i think that um it would be the board of health's recommendation to um, due to the pandemic, um, it would be our recommendation to close the um, play structure and swing areas on the basketball courts located at the Sunderland Elementary School for the foreseeable future. Um, all other town recreational facilities, walking paths, bike paths, and fields, I would say to remain open at this time. However, the governor's directive of gatherings of 10 or less people using social distancing should be enforced mm -hmm. um and uh i don't think that we should only do this because pretty much every surrounding town is doing it i also think um that we have had at least one surrounding neighbor call um and mention to a board of health member that they've seen um people congregating playing basketball and basketball in particular is a pretty uh, <laughs> uh, sport and it's, a, it's actually a pretty dirty sport because um, there's a lot of wiping of the face, wiping of your nose and eyes and everybody's touching the ball and then wiping their face. Um, so I, I just think that at this point, uh, I think that it's, it's a safe thing to do. And not necessarily having anything to do with touching the play structures or anything like that. It's to keep the people from transmitting the disease, transmitting the COVID from person to person. So that would be my recommendation. Um, I, I spoke with the uh, town administrator and um, we reviewed the law and, uh, you know, we thought it would be uh, good to run it past the board the select board and have a discussion about it. Uh, but I, I do feel very strongly that um, this is a public health matter and it should be done. Uh, comments from the board? Um, I, I agree, so, it makes sense based on everything that we've heard so far. And we only have one that one actual public structure to worry about so it should be fairly easy i think usually they just like zip tie the basketball nets and you know put up some caution tape i hmm. the uh principal uh barshevsky has already um emailed me I, I did a little footwork just to see you know what the um involved parties thought of 
you know, my idea. And um, he said the custodians, he, he could easily have the custodians do it. It wouldn't be a problem. And I would ask if um, the police chief would just have let's go around. I, I don't think this is a big problem. So I, I don't think it's a, an enforcement issue. I just think for public health and safety, it needs to be closed. Much like the restaurants, you know, much like everything else we're doing. So could I ask a question? I appreciate the fact that, you know, a team sport in particular, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a common, with a common uh, device, in this case a basketball, you know, makes some sense. Um, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with, you know, the, the mom who's walking or the dad who's, who's walking down there to use the swing structure. And to me, that is the uh, inherent tension uh, in simply closing a facility. And I understand it's being done across the Commonwealth, but I would be remiss if I didn't raise that point that at, so, at some level, aren't we supposed to be responsible largely uh, for our own actions and for the protection of our own kids? And, and again, I know what you're talking about. I always thought basketball is a dirty game, especially if you're trying to win. Uh, that said, yeah. that yeah. said, My I, I struggle too. with the seesaw or the whatever. Are there any other steps that can be taken about the play equipment that would affect, you know, elementary school? Well, age here's the thing. So we can put up signs to t say one person at a time, um, no more than, you know, or 10 people or less. But now who are we going to put there? At, are we going to put, are we going to hire a police officer $45 at a, you know, at a, um, a rate of a, um, a road job rate, $45 an hour to sit there and make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're making sure everyone's going one at a time. And if there's more than 10 people, we have to have a monitor there to, to say, okay, the 11th person has to wait. 50 feet away and you know, I mean, it's, and our, if they're it's social distancing and then they're going to get a ticket for $300 if they don't leave, you know, really, I, I, I think I, that's what this is for. I completely understand. I, I, I have to, I have to exercise my inner Libra gene. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to ask the question. And you're up against a Scorpio. So oh my God. That's a Ever problem. Win. <laughs> So, okay. Any other, any other discussion? Short, that's the long, short answer. And, and I appreciate the, both the background uh, as well as as well as the the passion around it. We have to err on the side of caution with all of this. So, Tom, you want to? I, I was just Scott. I was just wondering, Caitlin, were were we extending it? And. And I, I think we just have to be consistent with what everybody else is doing. So are you thinking about doing the, the walking path also or just, just, and, and, and from what, I, what I've seen, Mr. Chair, online about um, basketball courts and, and, and I only can say from my experience, because I work down the street at the big place with big buildings, and they've taken all the uh, basketball hoops down, and they've also taken, and believe it or not, is they've taken the, uh, the disc golf um, targets down also. Mm -hmm. and, and, the th and the thought process behind it is that when the basketball goes out, um, you don't know how many people have been, been handling that basketball or the frisbee or, or whatever, and it's just not the one or two people that are – that are there at that particular moment, but it's all the people that may have been there. So I, I guess I understand it. I, I don't, you know, we've, we've had this conversation many times in the past. I mean, our society is a different society than they, than they have in, in, in Asia. We, we are, our, our government is set up for the individuals. Theirs are set up for the, the cumulative countries and, we're just different and sometimes we just have to be reminded 
I don't have a problem reminding people um, about that because sometimes you do, you know, I, I just drove by, when I came up here, I just drove by Cranberry Pond before I came here. And I'll tell you what, there, there's probably more people there fishing than they've been playing basketball. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't hear anybody talking about shutting the Cranberry Pond down. So. Yeah. And then- I, I, and it, and it, and it's, but but I I also understand the I also understand the, the arguments for you know trying to keep a bunch of people um, from getting together and, and putting themselves in the danger. I mean, it, it's a tough one, Scott. I, I think <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for bringing it to our attention. David, you want to weigh in? No, I was just going to say, plus when people fish, they're going to get away from other people usually. So, <laughs> you know. No, when you fish, Dave, everybody, <laughs> if you catch one fish, everybody wants to fish next to you. Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me. I, I've been there. Uh, yeah. right. mm. Well, uh, if there's no other discussion, uh, I'd entertain a motion at this point to uh, close the elementary school playground uh, to the public, uh, follow the draft guide a board of health recommendation. And in that recommendation, I uh, recognize that there's gonna be an enforcement function that the board of health and the police will have over the public playgrounds. As far as private playgrounds go, Caitlin, are you sure you wanna head there? And if so, yeah. I'll incorporate, I'll ask in a motion. No. Scott, I, Caitlin, if I could, Scott, I don't think the police or the board of health are gonna be shackling people. Um, I, I think that I think if they drive by and they see a bunch of people congregated, they're saying, "Hey, guys, you know." Yeah. That, I think that's more. I I I, I think that's more what what Caitlin's asking for, isn't it, Caitlin? It is, but I, and I think what Scott is saying though is is I think he's just motioning that it, or or no, noticing that their enforcement because the board of health is making this it is a health provision but actually the police already have this enforcement power for anybody over 10 people anyway and you know um which i believe the chief even mentioned well it was definitely an email but the last time we met last uh monday uh with the different penalties with the first warning second uh, you know we can go through that i i don't want to mention it because i don't want to get wrong <laughs> up to the fine. Um, Don't basketball. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's yeah. all of it. But, um, so, the, so I think it's just the enforcement, I think it's just that the fact that the Board of Health has, um, right. has made this decision, um, but along with the Board of Selectmen. And the reason for using the term enforcement is that it's not by the board; it's it's by the BOH Board of Health right. uh, work with with law enforcement. Right, under under a public health emergency guideline. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. We'll also um, I'll ask uh, Cindy to put it up on the the website. You know that it's closed. Great. Thank you. Any other discussion? If, if not, is there a motion? Uh, make a motion to close the um, public playgrounds until further notice by the Board of Health. Second. I heard a second. All those in favor, and we'll put our hands now that we're doing Hollywood Squares. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Zero, please. Caitlin, are there any other um, COVID state of emergency updates from the Board of Health at this point that you want to bring forward in the meeting? Um, I believe we did receive our first check. Um, we thought we received it <laughs> last week, um, but we did receive our first uh, grant check for $3,500 and uh, for the public health nurses expenses related to COVID-19 okay. monitoring. And um, and we can put in for our second one, we're tallying her expenses, uh, uh, monitoring, which is that state um, computer system 
monitoring and uh, of any uh, open public health cases and um, any of her hours with, we, we have a lot of conference calls. We have a lot of updates coming from the Department of Public Health and our public health nurse is on top of all of this. So any hours, because we have a contract with her and we pay her hourly, uh, we are actually, we got a grant to pay for, for this. Um, and that, so we do have a second, we can put in for a second check. So um, I'm, I'm really pleased uh, that we got that money and got it so quickly. That's, that's really good to hear. And that's all through state's Department of Public Health, right? Yes. Yeah. And the FERCOG, the FERCOG is um, administering it on our behalf, but it is coming from the state. Great. I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Chief, you want to weigh in on anything regarding public health and emergency uh, status that we're in? Uh, no, I think the, the public in general has have been doing an outstanding job. Uh, following what they should be following. Uh, we have had a you know, couple of exceptions, but other than that, uh, the community as a whole has been doing great. And uh, they've been extra supportive of all the uh, emergency responders, police, fire, and ambulance. And we want that to continue. Excellent. Anything else uh, from the board with respect to uh, COVID-19 in our current state? Maybe I have one question for Caitlin afterwards, after the board speaks. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could please, I just want to remind people that the COVID-19 has, it, it's just not a physical ailment that affects people right now. And, and what I mean is, is that many people, there's a lot of additional stress that are being put, put on, on, and so, the uh, uh, not just physical health but mental health are is very important also, and, and I would just I would just like to remind people if if um it, it may thing like things are you know closing in on you or or the stress is getting too great I would highly recommend that you seek out appropriate health health care because there there's other things involved than just how fit the physical ailments of COVID. And and I I would I would again highly recommend that if you have had that feeling that you need to look out reach out and get the proper care. Great point, Tom. Dave, you want anything? No, I'm good. I think we we covered most of it there. <laughs> okay, so we're continue to be uh, in a declared emergency uh, as of tonight. The action, only action that's been taken we're keeping was to close down the public uh, play areas and remind people that, you know, group gathering larger than 10 uh, is, is just prime for problems. Uh, social distancing is still something that's really, really important. Remember that whole six foot rule, anybody who's been shopping lately or who's ever played hockey knows the end of the hockey stick is where you need to be at. <laughs> right? It's just that simple. Uh, take care of yourselves, be uh, sanitary in what you do, keep those hands washed, keep those surfaces wiped down, but also pay, pay attention to your neighbors at the same time. I have, I have uh, two uh, uh, friends who both work from home. They're, they're in the editorial and uh, creative business. And after not leaving their own home for a week, uh, a neighbor stopped by. Team simple on the surface. Uh, in one case, it was the first time they'd met having lived next to each other for six years. Just never saw the car move. Little things like that. That's important. Uh, Caitlin, I had a question uh, this afternoon, and maybe it's outside of the, the BOH's uh, prerogative. They know the commentary for Franklin County was a high percentage of COVID-19. And I wonder if that is a state and a percentage discussion, or if we're seeing, if you know that we're seeing something moving through the state uh, toward uh, the West, for lack of a better description. Um, this is anecdotal and my own personal knowledge. Berkshire actually had it pretty bad in the beginning. 
Well, I wouldn't say it's moving west. Um, I think it's actually pretty bad on either side of us. Right. Uh, Worcester County and Berkshire County are much higher than we are. I think we're raising just because it's raising. Okay. I, um, you know, I don't think that it's moving in any particular fashion one way or the other. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a wave percentage wise because if you Great. remember Berkshire was high in the beginning. So I, I think that we're, we're and uh, I, you know, I can't say it. If I say it, we're going to ruin it. Right. Well, let's not say it then. Let's Everybody not say not it. Um, <laughs> so let's just leave that balloon right there. Um, but, you know, I, I think people are following the, the, the social distancing. I, I did run to the grocery store today and I had a mask on and everybody, uh, almost, almost. I'll say the, you're in the minority if you don't have a mask on. And for the reasons, is this on, it's, it's not protecting me from catching it. It's protecting other people from getting it from me if I have it. And, you know, people are wearing the mask. Maybe that's what's helping. I don't know. I was driving through Sunderland during quote unquote rush hour this morning and there were no cars. So people are staying home too, which is great. So maybe, maybe that's why, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not as bad as it could be. Who knows? Like, yeah, well, I'm glad gonna to hear that. It's going to go up this week. It, 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 we don't have a choice. It's going up. Okay. Anything else with respect to COVID-19? If not, uh, we'll, we'll move on. Thanks so much, uh, Caitlin, Board of Health. I don't see the EMD in this, this Hollywood Squares thing. Uh, um, that's okay. Okay, next up. Uh, Jeff, very topically, uh, status of both uh, FY21 budget as well as what you think we should be doing for warrant articles and motions. I know there are in warrant articles for inclusion, motions in draft form. We know we have also pushed our annual town meeting to June 5th with the election on the 6th. Um, so we have a little breathing room with respect to this. Uh, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so um, there, are, there are, as was mentioned last week, are concerns about uh, revenues coming in next year. Uh, I think it was today or maybe Friday when the state said, hey, we're $83 million above our expectations for March collections, but also at the, in the same breath warned that they don't expect that to continue in April and beyond. Um, so one of the things that I did this week, uh, late last week, um, was to send out a memo to all departments saying that we expect um, decrease, a decrease in revenue uh, in fiscal year 21 and uh, to the schools as well, and asking them to come prepare alternative budgets if, if that's the case. Um, the latest numbers that I've heard bandied about without any particular source or background information was um, potentially three to 5%. So um, we should have more information. The Secretary of Administration and Finance is updating the legislature this week to uh, give the state revenue projections. Um, but I've, I've asked all the departments and the schools to take a look at their budgets. Um, you know, I think we all thought that hopefully this was gonna be a good budget year, um, but just the economics of how things are working out to to prepare for it not to be um, as, as good as we had hoped. Okay. Uh, there was some discussion at, uh, along with the MMA as well about being prepared. And I think these steps here in your co in correspondence that the board's got in front of it uh, is, you know, look at three to 5% reductions in your ask. I see that going out to Franklin Tech 
see it going out to Sunderland Elementary, and I see it going out to Frontier, as well as our departments. So we're asking for a 5% in their first pass. And again, this is, this is a necessary exercise as we look at what's going on in the general um, economy. The general economy at national level is one thing. Remember Massachusetts has had a pretty good run uh, with respect to capital gains. Uh, and we start seeing unemployment tick up. Uh, you'll see state revenues drop off. This is just the nature of it. Discussion from the board about the correspondence? All set, Scott. Nope, all set. We'll, we'll uh, send it out and uh, get our responses accordingly. I know that at the, at the it, it's just, so how do I say this best? It's tumultuous for everyone. Um, the heavy lift the folks in education are doing, get this thrown in the mix, can't be anything less than savory. It's certainly not sweet, uh, but it's necessary. And that's something that collectively we all uh, have to work toward being realistic about what we can afford going in the coming year. So that said, my I mean, thanks to the uh, Union 38, as well as Frontier and Franklin Tech uh, for taking a look at this and uh, going through this uh, piece of this. Okay, next up, uh, minutes of March 30th. Saving. Uh, it's a lot of minutes. minutes. You need a. Oh. Right, Wendy. Second. Tom, was that a second? I second. Yeah, I thought Wendy was trying to talk. Oh, sorry. Okay, so big second was up the minute. March 30, 2020, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, uh, next up, select board updates. Not hearing any? Just kidding. I was on a conference call last week, I think it was there as well, right? Legislative conference call with uh, Representative Blay? Yes, I was on it too. Yeah, Chief, you were on that one as well. Which, which one? The one with Natalie uh, Blay? Blay. It's with Natalie, yes. I missed the Thursday one, but I was on with Natalie. Good. Uh, it, was, it was a very good, um, it was a very good tool for keeping in touch. It was uh, four towns, Waitley, Sunderland, Deerfield, and Conway, uh, representatives across different aspects of local government from each town were in, in, in on the conference call. Uh, it was it was orchestrated well with great information exchanging going on, uh, and we left each with some homework. Uh, and Representative Blay and Blay's office uh, was very clear if there's anything they can do at the legislative level that we see as either opportunity or roadblocks that they want to participate in. Uh, and I thought that was quite helpful. So thank you, thank you, Rep. Blay, for that. David, did I capture that? Uh, yeah, I think I think it was uh, it was great, and it was also a good way for all of us to kind of get together because we kind of don't have that option right now, other than means like that. So it was a good opportunity, I thought. Good point, Jeff. You were in on that. Any thoughts? Uh, I think the information exchange, like you mentioned, um, you know, learning what the other communities are doing. Uh, the, or them learning from us. I think one of the things they wanted to learn to hear more about is these meetings that we've been having and via Zoom and how that's been working. And um, so le learning what we're doing particularly well and um, what other communities are doing that we may want to take advantage of as well. Great point. There was a fair amount of discussion about communities 
uh, interacting with their constituents and what the best mechanisms were there for achieving that. And I think it was Sunday on FCAT, I happened to, happened to cross the um, Conway Select Board. They were in audio form, but it, you know, they, they, were, they were getting their, their business for their community done and uh, incorporating input. And I thought it's all, it's all learning right now. That's good stuff. You know, it makes us better for it. Okay, uh, town administrator updates. A uh, couple things. Um, one is the there were some canoes that were left locked at the boat ramp. Uh, we had sent a letter, I think it was about mid-March, asking that they be removed by April 1st. Um, and they have since been removed uh, with the help of the highway department. Um, and so if, if those uh, owners are looking for them, they will be there for a little while at least, um, and they can contact uh, the town offices and we will put them in touch. Um, and don't just try and get it because we have a way of finding out if it is actually your canoe. So nobody try to get a free one. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, Chief Benjamin isn't on the phone, but um, from the discussions last week, uh, I think it was um, on a regional emergency dispensing site call originally, but there was discussion about potentially using the public safety complex um, as a as a site. And so I had reached out uh, to the chiefs and I think uh, Chief Benjamin has started putting together um, an operating plan for how that might work. I've also reached out to Principal Barshevsky. Um, if the weather is nice, I think that the, the Sunderland Elementary School has previously been a site of a flu clinic. Um, and if it doesn't need to be indoors, having a plan ready uh, where, where that could be done outside um, for flu vaccines or should a, a COVID-19 vaccine become available for wide dispersal, um, start planning for that eventuality. Um, and then I don't know I don't think we have a separate agenda item. Sorry, I'm not quite as prepared in my car as I'd like to be um, for legislative update, but there was an important piece of legislation that was passed. I don't know if you want me to talk about that now or um, at some other time. Uh, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the cliff notes, since I'm sure some of it's, some of it's in that car with you. Uh, just the cliff notes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on Friday, I think on Thursday, the legislature passed the bill and the governor uh, signed it on Friday. The law provides flexibility for municipalities should the COVID-19 emergency uh, extend through the summer and um, we're not allowed or we can't have town meetings, uh, then we would be allowed to spend into fiscal year 21 on a month to month basis. Um, it allows us to schedule a town meeting beyond July 1st uh, if it seems that that's going to be uh, a, not possible to do in June. Um, it has other provisions for delaying uh, deadlines for tax payments. I think the last day that would be allowable would be June 1st um, of this year. Uh, has, I think, a uh, provisions relating to extending the timeline for permits as well, land use permits, um, which I sent along to our Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Board Chair so that they were aware. Um, and I'm, I think those were the major topics that they covered. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jeff. And we'll, we'll get some details uh, for our next meeting. I know you had, to, you had to run out and grab Wi-Fi at a at a spot. How's the coffee, by the way? <laughs> I'm actually in my parents' driveway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I figured you ran over to Starbucks somewhere. Hence the joke. Um, okay. So next up, we have a fuel oil bid contract. It looks like Lower Pioneer, Lower Pioneer Valley Education Collaborative with a delivery mechanism being sold out of, out of Portsmouth. Is that correct? Even. 
I think it's uh, New. I think it's Connecticut. New Haven. We go out for an annual contract for fuel oil, gasoline, diesel, and spot market pricing. We've done this for a number of years. And the cover page is from the Lower Pioneer Valley Education Collaborative. And the back page looks like it's from, from Sprague Resources. And we've worked with Sprague in the past. And uh, this is, they haven't been in the mix in the last couple of cycles, but it looks like they're in the mix this time. Yes, uh, Sprague was the, the recommended vendor um, from Lower Pioneer Valley. Um, and I think I, I also included, and I checked again today and I didn't see updated prices, but, but what the most current uh, price per gallon would be. Um, I also have a recommendation for the number of gallons um, that we buy, I think, in past years, it's been about 9,000 gallons. Um, and I think there are a couple of reasons that we might want to consider lowering that. Um, one is that the recommendation from Lower Pioneer Valley is to only get about 80% um, of what you anticipate using because if you bid more, their cost for um, storage of the fuel, it might increase in, in cost. Um, there's also the installation of heat pumps uh, in the town office building, which actually they started doing the outdoor work today on, um, which will hopefully lower our fuel costs. And then my understanding is in the past couple of years, we actually have purchased an excess of about, um, I think 1500 gallons is what's been left over. Uh, so I think that the, the recommendation would between the heat pumps and and the excess would be uh, to buy um, instead of 9,000, uh, 6,500 gallons this year. Hmm. Discussion uh, amongst the board? Yeah, I, I think Scott that I think it'd be interesting if, if you own a large enough tank and a truck and you get all the permits and everything, you could go down to New Haven on the spot market today and buy gas for regular gas for 50, 50 cents, 50.3 cents a gallon. Is that chief? I think that's amazing. <laughs> He's just waiting. And to it, wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't very long ago that we were, well north of two dollars plus two and, yep. yeah we're, we're up to four Lumber. scott right i understand that was at least one administration ago interesting okay is there any more discussion if not i'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the town administrator and enter into an annual contract as you laid out second uh motion second we have a Second and a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, three to zero, please. Thanks for that work, Jeff. And eventually you can be the procurement officer and we'll just go, sure, whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. All good. Uh, next up, we have, because we have a, a split warrant right now, uh, we have a new election, annual town election warrant that reflects both uh, dates as well as, although the one in front of me still says April 2020. Uh, we moved, I'm sorry, it does, my apologies. At the top, uh, a new uh, election warrant, and it is for position of moderator, uh, one position for one year, select board, one position for three years, assessor, one position for three years, Board of Health, one position for three years. Riverside Cemetery trustee, one position for three years. Planning board, one position for five years. Planning board, one position for one year. Library trustees, three positions for three years. Elementary school committee, two positions for three years. 
and Frontier Regional School Committee, one position for years. Now, our list of elected offices has not changed. The date is the only thing that's changed. And that is, we have to announce the date being town elections, bring in casts or ballots, their votes for the following offices, which I just read for the year 2020 on Saturday, June 6th, 2020, the Sunderland Public Library at 20 School Street. And this is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, this is an election warrant and we're warning the community through this uh, motion and posting and it has to do with the date change. Is there any discussion? No. Not hearing any discussion, is there a motion? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor of reposting the annual town election warrant, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay. So our next meeting is uh, April 13th. It's going to be via this mechanism. It'll be the same time. I'd like to post, if I could, Jeff, uh, our office, find a mechanism for people who want to participate. And whether it's in the Zoom platform or you know, I'm actually in the office if someone wanted to call something that was important to people that we could get hey, participants hey, sure that Scott? Yes. Just to let you know, I mean, you don't, you do not have to have a computer to get on Zoom. They, you can very simply just go on your telephone. They, there's a, right. a toll-free number. There's a one eight eight number that you can call, and it's if you go to the uh, the Zoom posting that on our web page, it'll give you the Zoom meeting number, and also will give you a, a bunch of telephone numbers. And there's uh, usually two toll-free numbers that you can call, put, punch in the meeting number, and you can uh, talk on the, talk to us. So it's not just, you don't have to have a uh, computer to talk. Great point, Tom. So we'll post that with ours online, if we could, Jeff, what those numbers are and how to get in here. And that would be really helpful. Again, we, this seems daunting. I think this is our third meeting using the platform and I'm only beginning to get used to it. And I want to make sure that people in town have the chance to weigh in. That's really important. Absolutely. Okay. Any other, any other discussion? If not, I'm just a, a bit to scold the knuckleheads who keep throwing their empty bottles down the riverbank at the cemetery. Cut it out. There. I've done that. There's no other discussion. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Scott. Scott. Oh, hey, Peter. Hi. I just had a question, if you don't mind, um, regarding your statement about the three to five percent reduction in the uh, possible reduction in the budget and planning for that. Um, was that something that came from the Department of Revenue? Uh, it's M M M A guidance right now for municipalities based on the current economic conditions. It hasn't come from the Department of Revenue yet. But was it a three, three was it was the guidance to plan for a overall lower budget of three to five percent or was it to plan for a three to five percent reduction in the state aid part of your revenues the state aid part of the revenues so since i i don't have offhand what percentage of our revenues under you know normal circumstances are state aid i'm guessing it's a quarter yeah, about uh, probably a high quarter, but not much more than that. Okay. That's direct to town. Then you've got to figure out the impact on programs, in particular, from from your vantage point at the at, at the education side. Right, but what I'm saying is that if you look at the towns, uh, you know what that means for planning for the town revenues. You're not saying plan for a three to five percent overall reduction in town revenues, or are you? Well. It could be. Yeah, yes, we are. I, I mean, don't don't forget, Peter. I mean, you you look at you look at uh, um, excise taxes from new vehicle right. sales, uh, 
depreciation in properties because home home properties are falling. I mean, you know, right now we don't. No one knows. We're, I, understand. We're just, I understand. I just was trying to make sure I knew exactly what the guidance was you've gotten and what it and what it applied for. So thank yeah. you. I, I I understand. I, I just think that right we now have, we have we a meeting on to... Wednesday evening, yeah. um, and so obviously we've got to come to you know have a plan that we can submit. So you know it's. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. That's when, that's when we'll address it. Yep. Now, appreciate you bringing that forward, chiming in. I think it's important uh, to bear in mind that you know our ask is not in three to five percent reduction this year to you know next year to this year. It's three three to five percent reduction in the the growth of the expenses. I mean, that's the, the we're talking about a reduction in the ask for twenty twenty one. Up three to five percent. Yeah. Right. So that if we had a budget that was put in at four point nine, then you're looking for something that is basically uh, no increase to at most uh, uh, one point nine percent. Correct. Based on your your, your first pass. Yep. Yeah. Just want to make sure I know what you're looking for. I appreciate you asking. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Uh, one other discussion point with the board, we've got a change order in front of us from CH, the North Main Street reconstruction. This is for the documentation and missions documents for uh, the project. I'd like to have the board look at this submission and have this on our Okay. Yep. I missed that, Scott. Could you repeat it, please? You cut out, Scott. Uh, uh, what I like, what I like to do, Jeff, is make sure the board members have had a chance to review the actual request, understand where the actual uh, monies can come from for that before we authorize. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a second. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, you can call us out at 725. Thanks everybody for participating. Stay safe. <laughs>